somebody would come in from Skid Row and none of them wanted a police report. They just wanted us to call an ambulance and whisk them away to safety, but they didn't want a police report because we don't want to snitch. We have to live here. That's how bad Skid Row was. When I go out in the streets, I'm reminded me walking the streets is keeping somebody from getting hurt. For Dion, he's very, to me, he's very, you know, spiritual. He's very, he cares about the people here in the community. He cares about people on Skid Row. When we first met Dion, he said, did you need help? We like, yes. So he took us to a store, everything, bought us food, and helped, helped us find a place. We met Dion Joseph when we came to Los Angeles from Chicago about five years ago at the Union Rescue Mission. He helped us get a place and Dion got us off of Skid Row. Name Dion Joseph. I'm a senior lead officer with the Los Angeles Police Department in Skid Row. Right before I became a police officer, that's it's something I never wanted to be. Uh, we had a family history. Uh, of negative encounters with the police. My dad, after growing up in the Jim Crow South, on uh, one night as a young man, he was very violent. He grabbed a brick and jumped on top of a man, and as he turned the man over, it turned out to be the town preacher. And he was like, oh crap. The preacher said this, you got two choices. I either call the sheriff and have you locked up for the rest of your life, or you come to my church uh, every Sunday for two months. You do that, we're even. Thank God he chose the latter or I wouldn't be here, right? And he found the Lord, met my mom. Uh, he uh, decided to take his family to California and he said he would never harm anyone to get by again. Hey, young lady, how you doing? You need some water? Yeah. What happened to your eye, baby? Uh, uh, you know, people don't like you. Who don't like you? I don't know, the same, I guess. You, you got water? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm Officer Joseph. How long you been down here? Um, since this year. Yeah, you are kind of a new face. It's kind of hard getting housing. They, they, they reject me a lot. I got a couple of friends who might help you out, okay? Okay, thank Put that in your phone. Okay. What's your first name? Denise. All right, so I'll be waiting for you. Okay, I'll All right. Hey, now. See, that's, the, that's what bothers me. And I know she wants to tell me who did it, but she's scared. I have a philosophy that I've always, you know, carried myself by, you know, being African-American and being indoctrinated to hate and fear the police, you know, uh, once I got out there and learned my job, you know, I was allowed to be myself. And I'm thankful to be able to work on a department that allows you to be yourself. My badge and gun, they are not my means to invoke change, you know, but it's always going to be my faith, my heart, <clears throat> and my concern for them that will always be my unyielding dogs of war. What's up? Joe! <laughs> my definition of <laughs> Of a, of a good police officer is not just one who patrols a community, it's one who actually becomes a part of it. And I became a part of the fabric of Skid Row. Like when one of them get hurt, gets hurt or killed, it affects me. Your heart should be the catalyst for any noble thing you want to do. That's a good thing. But you always have to use your head to get it done. You always have to, because if you leave with your heart, you can make things worse or you can get it broken. And so, so yes, my heart inspires me to go out and love these people, you know? But I have to use the law, I have to use my head, and I have to use every tool in the book, my upbringing, my training, to make sure they're safe and feel loved at the same time.